Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we've got some Blender news. Over the weekend, Blender 3.1 beta, or in Blender terms, Beacon 3 was reached. Uh, and this kind of gives us an idea of a feature complete look at what is going to come in Blender 3.1 in about two months time. So we're gonna jump in, take a look at some of the key features in Blender 3.1 and we're gonna start things off with a drag race. So what you see here, this is Blender 3.1. This is the new splash screen, you saw that on the uh, thumbnail, very pretty by the way. And uh, here is Blender 3.1. Oh, this is running on a Mac, an M1 powered Mac in this case. And one of the big things we're gonna see is uh, some of the performance changes. So first off, I think, and I'm not 100% certain that this is a thing, here is 3.1, cycles rendering, there is me navigating around the scene. It seems to be pretty responsive on the whole. Here, 3.0, definitely seems a little bit slower. So I think we've definitely got some uh, viewport rendering improvements between cycles in uh, Blender 3.1 and 3.0 on a Mac, but the big thing is in rendering. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start rendering this guy right here. And don't worry, I'm not gonna finish this. This is gonna take a long time. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start rendering here. So this is 3.0 render. This is 3.1 render. They both slow down quite a bit while I'm video capturing, by the way. So this isn't indicative of overall performance, but I want you to notice something. I'm gonna let both of these run for, um, you know, a couple seconds longer. So we get a, a good baseline here and you're gonna see um, kind of a difference in performance. So I started them roughly the same time. The 3.1 started slightly earlier, maybe four seconds earlier on the whole. Here is the status of the, uh, rendering for uh, on 3.1 on Mac. You're looking, we're at sample 112 right now. Uh, we've got 20 minutes remaining in rendering this frame. Over here, we have three hours and 30 minutes remaining and we're on sample 12. So again, sample 13 right now versus sample 160. So as you can see, you're getting slightly faster by an order of magnitude faster uh, render speeds on Blender 3.1 compared to 3.0 on the Mac. Now, the big reason behind that is if you come on in here, so we go to Edit, Preferences, System, you're going to notice we now have Cycles Render Devices and you can select your GPU. So I have an M1 Max and you're going to see a massive increase in speed. So we now have a metal back end. Again, I also do think it affects the viewport rendering. Uh, it wasn't listed as a feature, but I do think this is smoother than in the 3.1 side of the equation. So definitely if you are a Mac lover, you're going to like 3.1, but there's stuff here for everybody. Now I gotta admit, I wasn't expecting this new feature, but I certainly welcome it. So what we're going to do now is take this huge scene here and we're going to export it. And we're gonna specifically export it in OBJ format. So I'm gonna come up here, export. You see here we have Wavefront Object New. So I'm just gonna go ahead, select that one. Uh, we'll pick somewhere for us to put it. It will cut it, okay. So new exporter demo objects. So you can see we've got a couple different options down here down this uh, side for configuring, but we're gonna go ahead and do an export out. And it started, we'll just do a quick count. One, two, three, four, four seconds. So it took about four seconds to do that export. Now what we're gonna do is use the old school exporter and we'll do the same thing. So export and we'll pick the existing one. By the way, the wavefront format is kind of a popular existing format. Uh, so old version, export to export that out. You can see slightly less options available there and we'll export this one out. Now this exporter was written using Python. The new one is written using C++. You saw the first one was about four seconds in duration. This one, uh, this one's a spinning beach ball. Uh, and it's gonna be a spinning beach ball for quite a while. Now you can see I've done this export a couple of different times. Uh, new versus old. So old comes out at 620 megabytes in size versus 600. So you get slightly more compact exports. But the biggest thing here is the performance of the exports here. So you're gonna see Overall, it, it's it's an order of at least 10 times slower. Uh, it was four seconds the first time. This takes probably a grand total, about a minute to do the export. Now on this part of importing and exporting, we've also got some improvements uh, to GLTF and USD uh, export and import, which is definitely nice to see. But this rewritten in C slash C++ based object exporter, uh, this is a nice performance improvement. Now we're looking at a pretty large scene. If you're dealing with a smallish scene, you're not gonna see this kind of impact. But if you're exporting out a rather large file, 
yeah, it, it's it's got a pretty big impact. And as you can see there, we're done now. So four seconds versus whatever that was. Pretty impressive speed increases there. And that's one that's going to benefit everybody. Definitely a nice improvement there. Uh, now we're going to switch on over and show a couple of other things made this release. Uh, Point Cloud's got a new rendering system. Um, not going to really illustrate that one. But I am going to use my trusty default cube here. And what we are going to do is, well, first off, we'll get rid of the animation window. Uh, we're going to show some of the new geometry node features. So first, let's switch over here to geometry node editor. And let's get rid of the sidebar and create a new network like so. Now, one of the nice things here is now if you drag a pin into empty space, it brings up a search field. Definitely nice to see there. Just a small uh, quality of life change, but I, I am happy to see this one added in for sure. It's little things like that that make it just easier and more pleasant to work with. Uh, while I'm searching here, let's show one of the new features here. So we now have the extrusion mesh operator like so, and let's drop that into that pin there. And there you can see the results of it immediately. So you can now do uh, mesh extrusions, uh, definitely a neat little feature. Another thing we can do is go ahead and uh, let's add a new node of type scene time. Let's find, there you go, scene time. Now what this node is going to give us quite a few abilities when it comes to uh, geometry node stuff, because what this passes it is a new variable that is every second that is elapsed since we press play or each frame that it laps. So if you want to do it at a finer granularity, you could use frame. If you want to do it time-based, you can use seconds. And what this allows you to do is change things over time using a scene graph. This one's going to be a bit of a, a game changer overall, pun not intended. So I'm just going to drop seconds into the offset of our extrusion over here. And you see here immediately now, because at the beginning, it's going to be zero seconds. So we're going to have no extrusion. So I'm going to go ahead and play this and you're going to see the effect of scene time and boom. So you're going to see how you're going to be able to use that scene time nodes to create all kinds of cool and magical things. On top of that, we also again have this new extrude functionality in there. There's definitely some other nice stuff in this particular release um, that we're going to check out. By the way, one other thing that happened, they also released Alpha 3.2. Uh, same time, this is uh, basically obviously the next version along. This is Beacon 1, I believe. Um, so this is the release after this one very early on. We're not going to get into the details of Alpha 2. Just to be aware, it is available for download right now. And I'm going to show you where you can go ahead and get these things right now. So basically head on over to the Blender download page. So just go to blender.org, download. And then what you want to do is scroll on down and you go experimental. When you go here or download uh, experimental down below, you're going to see here you have the option to get the beta. Uh, in the case of Mac, you can choose between for the M1 or for the Intel or Alpha, uh, same build available as well. Pick your platform up here and just grab them that way. So both the beta and the alpha were released this weekend. Uh, on top of that, the release notes are out there. Uh, so again, this is for Beacon 3. Uh, this is going to last until March the 2nd, at which point we should get our first release, which is pretty cool. Uh, we have a number of other uh, features in this one. For example, Grease Pencil, there is a new shrink, shrink rack function. I'm not 100% certain what you would use it for, to be honest. Um, but it, it's now there. There's this new sh shrink rack capability and other features were added in as well. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there were improvements to the, um, the object exporter, but also GLTF improvements for both importer and exporter and the USD exporter got better support as well. Um, kind of got, again, we saw some renders and cycles improvement, especially on Mac OS with that new metal back end. Um, and in the world of geometry nodes and nodes in general, that's where we saw a lot of improvement, a number of different features there. The big ones we saw in action, the new extrude feature and the new seed type feature, but we also have an accumulation field, uh, changes to attributes, instances, uh, dual mesh uh, options out there as well. So definitely a lot of movement and improvements in the world of editing of nodes. Also, again, when you drag the pin out, it'll automatically open up the search. Definitely going to be just a nice usability feature there as well. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Blender 3.1 Beta, also 3.2 Alpha, both released this weekend. I'm interested in letting you uh, let me know what you think of this particular release of the new features and functionality in it. Uh, definitely a great release if you are in a Mac using M1 Silicon. We're finally catching up to the rendering speeds on the Windows platforms and the Linux platforms. And that is definitely nice to see, but I'm interested to hear what you think of this release. Let me know. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.